with, with the Office of the Chief Forester of Forest Science Planning and Practices Branch. And what we're going to talk about here today, I'll build a little bit on what Brian said at the last stop, but we're going to talk about um, the single entry dispersed retention stocking standard uh, framework. Uh, just as a hands up, how many people have heard about this uh, tool? Excellent. Have anybody used this tool? Perfect. So it's going to be familiar for some um, and a little bit of a learning for other folks. So just as, as some context, um, this tool was actually developed by the Coast Regional Implementation Team back in 2009 as a framework for looking at um, sustainability issues that were happening in the early 2000s around partial harvest. So partial harvest was occurring back in those days for managing for a lot of non-timber resource values, whether it be visuals, cultural heritage, wildlife, and people were wanting to leave some stand structure, leaving uh, residual trees and looking about how to reforest in the understory. And people were using the single tree selection um, stocking standard framework, which is the multi-storied. Many of you have used that. It was designed for um, single tree selection silvicultural system in the southern interior dry belt fir. And what people were doing here was making a one pass, um, taking, leaving, taking, leaving some retention, and then having a regen. And so that type of silvicultural system requires you to make individual passes at different cutting cycles to release the regen. So what our group did was we tried to come up with a stocking standard framework that integrates overstory retention plus understory regeneration in a way that you only have to make a single pass. And so by making a single pass, you leave the regeneration in a state that it can grow um, without being impacted so much by the overstory retention. So just as some background, so again, it's designed to address stand level sustainability issues uh, with partial cut practices. So one was species shift. Another one was forest health. So what happens in a forest health when you leave overstory trees? A lot in the beginning, it was around old growth cedar hemlock and there was hemlock mistletoe. In this type of stand here, when Brian was laying it out, there's actually a type of bacteria gall that affected the Douglas fir in the regeneration phase. So it's the idea that you need to think about the overstory and how that overstory will impact the understory. You also need to think about your species in the understory in terms of shade tolerance, how well those are adapted to this different type of environment. So in this particular case, Douglas fir is less adapted to shade and it suffers when you get higher levels of retention, especially as you move north and into wetter climates. So it's somewhat shade tolerant in the coastal Douglas fir, much less shade tolerant as you move up the island and you move onto north aspects and you move into wetter uh, types of climates. So again, it, the framework was intended to replace single tree selection silvicultural system, also intended to replace people that were applying even age stocking standards and leaving a bunch of overstory retention and ignoring it. So it's trying to integrate the two piece. And again, it's trying to manage the regeneration layer while at the same time retain the trees with lots of flexibility to provide, you know, those stand structural attributes that are necessary for um, all of the other values that we might be managing for. And the one thing that's nice about it is it's flexible. So you can design as a prescribing forester what type of distribution, whether it's aggregate, whether it's clumped or individually dispersed, right? And the system that we're gonna talk about, Greg's gonna walk us through a plot there, it shows how the flexibility works. So what is it? Again, it's a, it's a stocking standard that applies to the overstory trees as well as the understory trees. And both of those contribute to the stocking <laughs> obligation. We measure the overstory trees in terms of basal area, and then we look at the interaction with the understory in terms of your typical 3.99 plot looking at, at the region. And so just a couple of examples. Again, this would be an aggregate piece where it's more of a single uh, stem retention, and we would apply the same, the same type of framework. When we were designing the framework, we looked at sort of some key principles, and, and really the principles are ecologically suitable species, that means from a forest health perspective and ecological perspective as well as things like shade tolerance, ability to measure it and be repeatable so you can get an answer to assess how well you are with achieving your objectives. Describe where and when it will be applied. So if you have an FSP, that's your FSP talking about the situations and circumstances as you where you would apply this standard. So you would say something like in this area for managing cultural heritage or in a partial retention VQO, those types of things. So where it would be defined. 
Then a time element. So how long and at what time frame are you going to measure it? That'd be our typical, you know, free growing assessment period or 20 year free growing date. Really important is the forest health piece, both at the overstory and at the understory. So making sure that we have healthy trees that are gonna survive to meet our objectives. Whenever you're partial harvesting, you need to think about root disease. You need to think about um, hemlock dwarf mistletoe if you're leaving mistletoe. You need to think about scarring of your residual trees so you don't end up with a, a dead tree unless your objective is to you know, create some snags. Um, maintain or minimize the impacts to stand productivity. So again, trying to think about site occupancy and trying to manage your site occupancy so you have um, occupied that, so you don't have gaps where there are no trees type of scenario. And then maintain or enhance the commercial value, right? So thinking about what species you're going to regenerate in the right spot for retention, leaving some stand value, right? So we don't want to take out all the value and leave all of the poor things, anticipating that there's going to be some type of a next pass and that pass would take everything. And then again, to be flexible, we really need to be able to apply this in multiples of situations where we can actually adapt and manage for those values. So just as um, what it is, so and what it's not. So it's not intended for a clear cut. And so for Douglas fir, we've defined a, a clear cut scenario where there's less than four meters squared of diverse, of dispersed uh, basal area retention. In this particular block, there's probably somewhere between eight and 16 depending on where you are in the block so if it's a clear cut you just apply your normal even age stocking standards it's not intended for stands that are an intermediate cut or commercial thinning so where you're going in you're leaving 40 meters squared residual basal area well dispersed usually defined as no gaps greater than a certain size that's um, sort of a different standard and that's based on either density or residual basal area what it is designed for is where you're in between. So this sort of nine meters squared to 39 in some sort of distribution pattern of aggregates and dispersed, that's what it's, it's designed for. When we first started with the cedar um, old growth, it, the values were different. So in that case, it was, you know, cedar and hemlock could grow up to eight meters squared and it was eight meters um, to 39. So we used the, the TAS model to calibrate first in 2013. We calibrated it for old growth cedar hemlock. Then in 2016, we calibrated it for Douglas fir. So that is why the numbers are different. Do we have it perfect? Probably not. So we've done a little bit of work in commercial thinning and is the 40 meters squared the right number? There's probably some room to play depending on you know the, the different site indices. This, this particular standard for Douglas fir was calibrated for site index of around 30. Uh, with a range of 24 to 36. So if you'll remember back there, Brian said this is a CWHDM site series 01, which has a site index of about 34 based on side back. So it's in the ballpark, so we can try it out for here. Um, application again, so low retention, low retention again being less than four meters squared, landscapes not constrained by any sort of non-timber values, Cedrus doesn't apply you would apply your regular even age standard. And so that would be an example of a retention block or a block with a clear cut with reserves where there's lots of openings, lots of light. You would just manage for, for Douglas fir. In moderate retention, and that would be parts of this block, um, the low end. So you've got some sort of constraint where you need to leave um, some residual trees, or it could be about maybe not a constraint, but some sort of reason to leave these trees for some other value you're managing for. That's where Cedrus would apply. And you really need to be thinking about, okay, the understory uh -huh. component, how much Douglas fir can you have? Is What's the Douglas fir going to do under the, under the overstory? And then we have other ones, so 10 to 16 meters, and we'll talk about that, Greg, here in this plot. But that's where we start to see some significant impacts happening with, with Douglas fir. And just as, as Brian noted there, um, some of these stands has been spaced. So this particular place where we're standing on, they actually spaced this to remove the competing hemlock. Hemlock regenerated very quickly. It overtopped the Douglas fir, and we actually spaced it out to remove the, the competing hemlock throughout this block. Um, hemlock, under any type of overstory, you get a significant response. It really likes that, so you get really high high densities of, of hemlock. So you need to be thinking, if your crop tree you want at rotation, 
is Douglas fir. Okay, what is the hemlock going to do? Um, how is the Douglas fir being affected by the overstory? And then we get into the high retention. So these are, you know, sort of over 16 meters for Douglas fir and under 40. We've got some resource values we're managing for. We're not going to be able to manage for a lot of Douglas fir because of the hemlock competition, because of the growth effects of the overstory. So we need to think about, okay, are there gaps in places where we can create little openings to manage for the Douglas fir? Um, do we need to do a spacing treatment as was done here? And what is the probability that Douglas fir is going to, to meet it? So in the standard, we actually said you need to think about the ecological suitability of Douglas fir as an understory when you're in these higher levels of retention. And then again, high level retention, that would be the commercial thinning piece. You're not managing for a regeneration component, you're just thinking about um, the overstory. Okay, so the other piece is around aggregate. So aggregate retention, and we kind of defined it as being, um, if you've got 15% of your um, standard unit occupied by internal reserves and greater than 15 meters squared, you're getting this edge effect then you can start to think about maybe um, Cedrus is an opportunity there as well. Overstory trees, really important. So again, a crop tree versus a non-crop tree. So there's um, a series of forest health crop tree selection criteria and, and they're defined in the FS660 for those of you who have done silviculture surveys. We've added some information around that. So, for example, if we had a hemlock with mistletoe, we would use the Hawksworth index to describe how bad that is. And if it's if it goes over a certain criteria, it wouldn't be considered.